and welcome to the Fleet Geeks podcast. We're here to help develop fleet and transport professionals. Do you want to progress and develop your skills and knowledge? We promise to bring lively conversation and debate around interesting issues and keep you bang up to date with changes in our awesome industry. The Fleet Geeks are a community of professionals and if you enjoy the podcast, why not join the discussion for free in the Fleet Geek community over on Facebook. Red light, red lights rolling, mate. Red lights rolling. Do you know what? We recorded that live earlier, and I haven't been yes. in to see if actually anyone's commented or anything like that. To be fair, no, I, I saw know. it on Facebook. Did it go on LinkedIn? Yeah, it went on well, obviously, it was LinkedIn time, Live, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So ah. I'm, I'm looking a bit more relaxed now in my pew. That's right. You got yeah. earlier on. If today, if, if you didn't miss, if you didn't get the uh, we, we record, we're recording this on the day we did a LinkedIn Live, and it was my first LinkedIn Live, which was really useful. Uh, but uh, earlier on in the day, Pete was uh, looking like he'd been to a been in front of a magistrate, he was all dressed up, but he's much more like the normal Pete we know now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Puma, Puma Pete. That should be my you, name. I tell you what, you you advertise Puma, and I'll advertise. I'll advertise. Oh, look at that! I'll look do that. the. Yeah. I'll, I'll, you do I'll the. the you branding. do the proper branding, mate. You do the proper branding, mate. Do you know what? I, I should have put the flagship. Thing. When I started the flagship business, I did have a vow that I wouldn't advertise any other bloody companies other than my own. Um, but yeah, here I'm, I am. I'm, I'm sure yeah. Puma are grateful. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm sure they are. Yeah, with our huge Why, reach, much huger reach well, than well, this. Well, you know, we, you say that, but I tell you what, and Fleet Geek's getting popular. Have yeah, I'll tell you what, go? it really, it really pumped yeah. my tires up this morning yeah. to get that message yeah. from uh, yeah. from Mr. Powell. I don't know, I don't know who the operator was, but if you're listening, national operator, we love that you're listening. And do you know what? Absolutely. If you're listening, drop a comment, drop a comment, drop a review. If it's helpful, tell us what you think. But yeah, wherever you've downloaded that podcast, particularly on iTunes, uh, mm. they've got you're able to review them. Are you able to comment on them, uh, or you can just comment on the post, or you can share it. You know, but yeah, make sure you subscribe because subscribing and downloading, there's people that are actually able to listen to them online, and we never actually get the download statistics either. No, um, but uh, yeah, no, all of that's really important. Anyway, we're waffling on. Uh, we're going to talk about everyone's favourite subject: driver CPC. Driver CP, don't we love it? Yeah, don't, don't we just love driver CPC? Uh, my Sorry. mind has been focused recently on driver CPC because we, I'm, I'm doing some work in the background on, uh, on some of the new offerings that we've that we got. Um, I'm a week so... away from having to deliver one as well. It'll be oh, I, unlucky. I, I, yeah. Oh no, yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm going to be going. I'm going to be cooped up. Well, by the time this goes live, I'll have done it, but I'll have been cooped up in a very small canteen for an operator um mm. and uh no doubt i'll have the pleasure of a dvsa visit as well because i haven't had yeah. one in a while so <laughs> we do uh, yeah. we do we do it in, in you know we, I, I had the for i had the good fortune on the first two days uh back you, you you're obviously this is our, after the new year and the first two days back uh back into work i had the good fortune in delivering driver cpc at our premises in peterborough which was a real treat because it's a it is you know we, we, we don't want to you know over egg the pudding but it is really a great facility and uh it, it was oh, a pleasure to deliver in such uh such I, great circumstances I actually, so enjoy your broom cupboard <laughs> yeah i uh i uh i name dropped you yesterday actually so i had uh freddie come over and see me from a turf company i'm hoping he's going to be listening to this because i tried to put him onto the podcast mm. anyway we, we were talking about earned recognition and we were talking about driver cpc i'd met him uh at the chartered institute for logistics and transport mm. silt i've got to make sure i say that correctly um it's more worse when you write it down to be honest yeah, but, it is, uh, yeah. yeah so uh we were at the silt uh safety and logistics forum uh, is where I met him and um, him and uh, him and him and, him and a few of the others and um, he uh, he came to us to have a bit of a chat about uh, a bit about stuff and he said you know what he goes I used to do driver CPC I used to pay good money and I had someone come in house to deliver it and he said the issue I've got is with driver CPC the onus is always from the awarding organization around the length of time yeah, the number of people in the room, the facility, and that the slides are what you say they're going to be. And he said, actually, there's no quality control of the actual content. He said, no. And he and no. he said after stuff, I'm get I got fed up of people coming back and telling me that a uh, uh, safe loader. So this was the example he used, right? And I thought, Jesus, Mark could have a field field day. <laughs> so the example he used was that a driver had come back and said that on the CPC course he'd been on. Uh, for safe loading 
was that he'd been told that if a truck was turned upside down, everything should stay in place by the CPC <laughs> trainer. But, yeah, apart from, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's an interesting concept, <laughs> isn't it? But, oh, my <laughs> word. So he said there's yeah. nothing. And, and, and uh, Freddie goes to me, I'm pretty sure that's not the legislation, is it? And I said, no, it's bloody not. And I said, no. well, you know, this is Mike and Mike writes our courses. And if it comes to, if it's, if it's legislated, it's in the course. And the actual yeah. facts are in the course. And uh, I said, there's one thing I can stand on, and that will be that, you know, we, we only do, we don't do any of the My Mate Reckon stuff. No, um, no, we steer so. away from that. I mean, and you're absolutely right, you know, about the driver CPC content. You know, it's never about the content. Uh, it, it's it's always about the, the you know, what time did everybody, what time did we start? How much, you know, what were the brake lengths and all that kind of stuff. That's quality control by who we used to know as Jout, now the DVSA. But uh, precious little is, is is quality controlled about the content, is it? Ho- hopefully, hopefully they're looking to deal with that, though. But, um, you know, I know we're going to talk about what the future of CPC is and, and, and repeating courses and things like that as well. But I've, I've just had a really frustrating encounter. Um, well, it is an encounter as well. So we had... Um, I'd got records for one of the jobs that's now been created by drivers not being able to do repeat repeat custom or repeat courses is that we've we've had to be a lot uh, more on our ball and on our game yeah. around keeping records of who we've trained and what courses they've gone on and things like that. And I was adamant that a driver recently had only done two courses. Um, and uh, we've had an invalid comeback on his driving uh, last we did a bank of three more to fill fill him so three different courses which gives him five and on the what we believed was his fourth course so his fourth and fifth course and he's not said any different because that's what's so frustrating is he's come back as invalid no, uh, on his yeah. driving license and so i've queried dvsa there's an email address cpcre and i've emailed them and said look you know our record state this driver had only done three courses and on the fourth course you've marked him as invalid. Um, and he's not told us any different and says he's not trained with anyone else, but yeah, the response I've literally, I can read the response. It's a generic mm. response. Yeah, yeah. Come back, which basically says, uh, dear Pete, thank you for your email dated 10th of January to continue driving professionally uninterrupted to driving needs to complete 35 hours of training every five years as if I didn't already know that as a CPC Uh, centre. The training will show the status of invalid if they have completed more than 35 hours of driver CPC periodic training in their current five-year cycle. Any training taken in excess of 35 hours will not count towards a future driver CPC qualification, and this training cannot be carried forward to their next cycle. Uh, Blah, blah, blah. Sends me a link to the guides and links. Uh, if you've been checking the driver's details via your centre history, please bear in mind that this only shows training completed through your centre. So there we go. Obviously, yeah, the right. owner, the onus is back on me. The onus is back on us, yeah. obviously. But if a driver doesn't tell us any different and says, "I've not trained with anyone else," Gov. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How do we know? Yeah. Uh, you've and, just got uh, to take. You've just got to take the, his word for it. Yeah. I, I think. I think the issue I've got. And, and and I think we're digressing actually away, but it is related to no, it's related. Yeah, courses. Yeah, yeah. I I don't think the system's very good for drivers to check what they've done. No, that's there's a that's phone the problem, number and a login yeah. system where they have to apply for a login and then they get the yeah. login come back. And I think I think I think it's a bit complex for drivers. I think it is a bit complex. Yes. And I understand that it's from a data protection point of view, they can't make that available to us as a centre. I get that because you'd have every Tom, Dick and Harry from every centre chasing every driver for them to complete courses because they'd have visibility of when they're due and how many they've, yeah, had, how many yeah. they've not done. But um, I do I do wonder if there's a better it's way. It's not easy, Mike. is it? There must be a better way because, you know, it's one of the questions that, that I get asked quite a lot on driver CPC courses. Um, you know, the, the drivers have no idea, really, unless they've unless they've been with a particular employer and that particular employer sort of has one a year and they kind of everybody knows where they are. Um, they, they, they very rarely have any clue as to how many that they've, they've done or haven't done. Um, and we have to take that as on face value. So, hi, it's Pete from Flagship Partners. We're really proud to sponsor the Fleet Geeks podcast. 
Flagship partners offer a range of consultancy and training services to ensure that our customers remain compliant and have the best possible knowledge to be able to fulfill their work. If you're interested in support with any of our safety, HR or compliance services, or you want to train to be a transport manager or need driver CPC training, give us a call today. You know, if they've done more than they need to and we'll get that invalid come back, then well, basically they've just wasted seven hours of, of their yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you can't bank them. You can, you can, the whole system works on advance. Yeah. So, once you, so, once so, so, card, so I, th I think, I think maybe we should explain for, for the listener who maybe is a bit new to it, let's do them the favor of really explaining CPC to them. So, yeah. everyone knows, as everyone knows, you have to do five courses in five years. And it has recently become clear that previously, when it was introduced in 2009, you were able to repeat courses, which has now changed. You yeah. now need to take different courses. Although there is a bit of a loophole that has been picked up on the Facebook groups, whereby essentially the DVSA system for the repeat is checking the CRS numbers. As far CRS. as we know, that hasn't been shared categorically with us. So I don't know no. for certain. But as far as centres know... DVSA are checking the CRS numbers, whereby if they're modular courses, it may have the same CRS number, but actually be different content. So there's that level of complexity there for them to check. But also they could potentially do five first aid courses with five providers uh, because the CRS number will be CRS different, for the different, different for the different providers. So yeah. there, there, is, there is potentially a little bit of challenge there. But ultimately, if we're all being standard and correct, uh, ideally a driver will do five different courses in a period of five years and what will happen is is they'll renew their cpc will renew before the due date it will renew with a five year thing on it but if you take more training in that period of time before your cpc is elapsed which is what we have just been talking about yeah you know yeah. if you you know if for example you didn't did your five courses in four years so you're a year early renewing you'll essentially get you'll essentially have that year remaining plus the remaining year, five yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in that year, if you did any, any additional training, it won't actually count towards your CPC, no. which I, do you think that's a bone of contention, Mike? What well, a little that? bit, isn't it? Yeah. You can't bank. You know, it. I suppose people are just going mad and sort of bank, uh, you know, a load loads, and not think but, about it. Yeah. Mm, but I, it's... you know, so I'm not sure about that, mate. I'm not sure yeah. about that. I feel like, I feel like they should be able to bank maybe at least one in a year. You know, yeah. It, it, yeah. you know, if that was to happen, maybe maybe they should bank be able to bank twenty percent um, for a bit of leeway. I, I, I don't know, you know. Um, so the the whole thing's a bit frustrating, and then and then I guess the other thing for people to be aware of is that there is a system for drivers to check the CPC that they've done. Generally speaking, a five year period is a long time. I imagine drivers. How many employers do you reckon a driver has in a five-year period? The yeah, average yeah, driver. The, the turnover. Uh, yeah, potentially. Some, yeah. Potentially, yeah. what, 10 employers in a five-year yeah, period? Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. Um, you know, and the issue we've got, and, and I think this is my biggest bone of contention, and, I, and, I, and I'll put my foot down on that, and hopefully people listening will, will agree and understand. If we don't make it easier for drivers to be able to check what they've done, we run the risk of encouraging them just to leave it all to the last minute. Yeah, which we've seen. Yeah. And we continue to penalise them for mm. overtaking them. That we, by, by the way we're so rigidly managing it, or it's being so rigidly managed, I think it's maybe counterproductive into what we want to achieve from it. Because the, the behaviour it drives is, do you know what, fuck it, I can't... Last year, last time I ended up doing seven bloody courses in five years. I don't know what happened. So, do you know what? I'm just going to leave it I'm, all. I'm going to leave it to the last minute. Yeah. yeah. And I'm going to leave it all until the two months before I've got to do it or the last year. And I'll just get five done in the last year. And then yeah, I'm not paying for more yeah. than I need to. I'm not wasting my time. And I can remember what courses I've done. Yeah, I yeah. It's like asking what you had for breakfast, isn't it? Like yeah, four years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, what, did you have, yeah, what did you have for breakfast yeah. five years? And, well, and, course, and in reality, maybe maybe you are right, Mike. My expectation is for people to be able to remember what courses they did four years yeah. ago. But actually, actually, maybe you are right. Can I remember what courses I did four years ago? No. I don't know. No. You know. Absolutely. So we um, need to make that system easier, don't we? We much, need to make much it easier, much, much, much simpler. Much more much simpler. 
user friendly because uh, and, and again if i'd have had a pound for every time a driver had said to me i'm not worried about my next card because oh, i should have packed it in by then <laughs> and then you see them again and you oh i thought he was jacking it in yeah well one more one more round you know and, and people are actually uh, planning their life <laughs> planning their retirement around the, the round of cpcs you know that oh no no i won't do this lot again this won't happen again you know and then you find out that that actually uh, you know left it right to the last minute uh, so talking of leaving things to the last minute with driver cpc we are still the the and i haven't pulled the statistics recently but i think probably back in october november time i pulled the st statistics they're quite um easy to find online um the statistics for uploads and drivers hours and if you compare where we are now or where we were back in october november with where we were prior to the last five year cycle back in uh 2019 so you'd have been looking sort of around about 2017 ish uh, we're about a million uh, hours behind you know and that sounds like wow uh, and that's a lot of courses that's a lot of uh, you know so um there is no and that's all covid to... related isn't it that's all COVID well related. yeah i think i think it's a kind of i think actually it's a, a double-edged sword actually i think covid still is still yeah giving us uh concern in terms of the, the courses that weren't delivered in classroom uh, obviously that's left a, a legacy now where we're catching up a little you know a little bit like the way that sort of doctor's appointments and things are you know these things are catching up um there's that and i also think which is probably what we we're going to talk about in the other part of this uh podcast the other you know the other elephant is the in the room is that a, a two or three year two years ago i think it was now the government announced that they were going to consult the industry uh on changes to uh driver cpc so a lot of people just saw changes to driver cpc oh that'll be that's it then gonna scrap it well of course when a government consults um you know with its people as it were there is terms of reference and and scrapping it was never in the terms of reference so you know it's not going to be scrapped folks it's never going to be scrapped um so but but they had proposed that the industry suggests that changes to come now we've been waiting as an industry for an awful long time now for for the government to announce what those changes actually are and um i think it's not been helped by the fact we've had about 16 five prime ministers <laughs> yeah. you know like, god knows how many five transport secretaries yeah i think uh you know mark harper is apparently the the, the latest incumbent in the transport man, uh, uh, minister's seat uh but it has been a, a merry-go-round doesn't it and um one or two people in the industry have told us that um as far as you know as far as we're aware um it is on the min it is in the minister's in tray uh but whereabouts it is on yeah. and which minister's in tray we don't know so there's there's no sort of uh, there's nothing coming out of the department of transport as yet to to let us know what that consultation or the results of that consult consultation may may look like um mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people have all, so a lot of people, a lot of operators have said, well, you know, CPC is changing. So let's, let's hold fire. But yeah, I think, I think, we can't I think afford that. so let's go, let's go to Utopia. So for me, Utopia would look like driver CPC would become, I think, a two, a two and a half to three and a half hour session. Uh, and if that meant drivers having to do 10 in five years, so be it. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see, uh the the trainers held to account on the quality of the materials they're mm. using as well as the quality of the facilities they're using i would like to see that the cpc data including the courses taken was essentially made available in the same way as if a driver license check software where it's mandated where they've signed the mandate yeah, yeah, we, say, yeah. i'm happy for you to check my driver's license that that driver CPC data is readily available as part of it. Yeah. I think for me, I think that would resolve a lot of problems, mate. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Yeah. It it's mm. it certainly it certainly could do with a shake up, couldn't it? And I think, you know, uh, as you say, you know, I probably think in terms of logistically speaking, half days would probably be better than, you know, three hours. But but certainly um it, it's gonna it's you can I can, you know, if if I've got their attention for half a course and 
you know, we do, I don't think there's many CPC providers that can. We have our famous no snore guarantee. Um, so we, 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 you know, I think we probably do better than most to hold attention of drivers uh, for as, as long as possible. But, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, it is stretching the imagination somewhat to think that someone's going to concentrate for seven hours. So it, it definitely has to go down. Uh, that definitely has to turn down a little yeah. bit. Doesn't it? I, and no doubt as we release this podcast, we'll get the usual comments of driver cpc crap should be scrapped blah 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 as you always get but um yeah yeah uh, it'll be interesting what's your two pennies worth do you know what mike i'm just looking at the time and thinking oh my god this is perfect 20 minute podcast spot it's on isn't it? right on the money so it's yeah. counting down at the minute from 1935 so let's get <laughs> it tied up um guys thank you for listening to this podcast we hope you found it valuable uh and hopefully you've had a little bit of an insight into how driver cpc is managed and uh, Mike and I will see you on, on the next, next one. one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> see you on the next and one. Subscribe, and we will see you on the next one. And that is 20 minutes. See ya. Hang on. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please share with your friends and colleagues too. Join us for free on Facebook with the Fleet Geeks community for transport and fleet managers. Fleet Geeks offers ongoing professional development, networking and mentoring too. So get in touch with me, Pete Rushmer, on any social media platform to find out more.